David, I understand you uh, came ready with some snazzy visuals uh, that are going to help us understand the scale and growth of Waymo and, and also what, what it sees. So maybe to start, tell us a little bit about just how Waymo is scaled and how you were able to achieve that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Waymo's been around for a long time. We've been, uh, we started as the Google self-driving car project in 2009, uh, graduated to our own company uh, in 2015, took the first fully autonomous public uh, uh, trip on public roads after that, and have been scaling methodically since then. Um, one of the things that, you know, there hasn't been a silver bullet that's really helped us to achieve that scale. We started with a foundation of safety, but really we had to leverage cutting edge technology to be able to handle everything that's thrown at us on public roads. Um, and, you know, that includes machine learning models and more recently, artificial intelligence. Totally. Um, and so I'd like to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about that technology today um, and, you know, uh, walk you through some of the events that really uh, illustrate it. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah. And so um, let me first talk a little bit about some of the technology that goes into the Waymo driver, starting with what it sees. So we start out with camera, which gives us this full, uh, uh, full color representation of the world. On top of that, we layer in LiDAR, which uses laser points bounced off of objects. We use the speed of light to tell how far away those are, and that gives us this 3D structure of the world, helps us understand the speed and heading of objects in it. And uh, you know, when the weather is inclement, we also add on radar. Those last two were perspective views. This is a top-down view of what the Waymo, car, uh, the Waymo driver sees. And this helps us to see through fog and rain, and also helps us to see, you know, fast-moving objects that might not yet be visible to the camera or LiDAR. Now, these three different sensors come together and are all essential. They come together in our perception stack. And so you can see in the upper right here that we're labeling and representing every single object uh, that's important for us to understand in the scene. We label pedestrians, vehicles, road paint, traffic signs, traffic lights, et cetera. And um, those are all handed over to our our behavior module, which has two main goals. One is predicting the behavior of all of the objects in the scene so that we know where they're going to be uh, as we start to traverse near them. Uh, and then uh, secondly, planning a path through the scene. So both the trajectory as well as our speed along that trajectory. Now, these are the things that are happening on board, but yeah. none of them would be possible without our simulation capabilities, where everything comes together, we're able to test our software, put it through its paces through millions of miles of simulated driving and make sure that the Waymo driver is ready for prime time, ready for uh, being shipped to public roads, and ready for all of our users who've grown so used to using the service. Totally, and I think this is all so cool. It sometimes feels like magic, but of course there are many challenges that come with this. I, maybe walk us through some of that and how you guys kind of work through those. Yeah, those absolutely. Yeah. So there are maybe two classes of challenges, yeah. I would say. You know, on the first hand, we have kind of the nominal driving that we do. So lane changes, turns, uh, you know, climbing up and down the steep streets yeah. of San Francisco. And we were able to build a machine learning model that attacks all of those different maneuvers very smoothly and confidently, right? For anyone who's driven in a Waymo, this is, you know, the feel of the Waymo driver that really builds trust in all of our users. But at the same time, we're driving the equivalent of several human lifetimes of driving every single week. And that means that we get to see all of the edge cases and these rare scenarios that the world throws at us. If you just think about the, you know, the wildest thing that you've seen on public roads ever, um, that's something that we experience almost every single day. And you know, some examples would be you know, these stray cyclists or you know, a skateboarder who falls in the road in front of us, a barbecue that fell off of a truck at full speed on the freeway. Um, I don't need to tell you about San Francisco's wild weather. If you were here last weekend, we had a tornado warning. Here's a tree that fell down um, in front of us. And I think you know, what this really illustrates is that the challenge of autonomous driving is not just in the driving task, but really in understanding all of the objects in the world around us and how we're intended uh, to interact with them. So these are just some really short scenes. What I also wanted to bring here is a walkthrough of three events that I think really helped to illustrate the importance of machine learning and artificial intelligence in the Waymo driver. Um, this first one was a very recent event. It actually took place last week in Austin, which is one of our latest cities that we're um, uh, rider only or fully autonomous in. Um, just to orient you around the screen, this is what our cameras are seeing in the vehicle. And then up here is uh, the, the representation from perception. I'm going to point your direction to this uh, scooter rider uh, that's 
uh, that's in the road just in front of us as I hit play. You can see she's riding and then all of a sudden stumbles into the road in front of us. Now, in order to be able to react to a situation like this, a number of things have to come together extremely rapidly. First, I mentioned behavior prediction. Our behavior prediction needs to go from predicting her behavior as somebody on a scooter to a pedestrian who's briefly lost control and is stumbling into the lane in front of us. And then I go back to our path planning module where it needs to understand the physics of the vehicle, the capabilities of the car, and balance a hard brake, which in this case takes place at about a half G of, uh, of braking, along with a strong swerve over to the left, which is about a third of a G. And so doing both of those actions at the same time is just not something that humans are typically expected to do. I don't know that I would be confident that I could accomplish this yeah. you know, in this scene. Totally. Um, going to our next example, uh, this is one that every single parent in the audience is absolutely going to uh, resonate with. Uh, without more introduction, I'm just gonna point your attention to this line of parked cars on the right here. And as we can see, this girl just about darts into the road uh, ahead of us. Once again, an illustration of the uh, importance of behavior prediction and understanding those actors. We made a decision relatively early on in our behavior prediction model to train it separately on adults versus children, be precisely because of scenes like this and the fact that children you know, don't have the same appreciation for the danger in the road and the fact that you know, we need to be you know, somewhat more conservative around uh, their behavior. Also, this is a great illustration of why it's important to have a driver that is never drunk, never texting, always paying attention, and, ever, and, uh, and ready to react at a moment's notice. Um, this last scene here, um, we've changed the representation of the perception uh, model here to uh, illustrate what we call the pedestrian key points here, right? So essentially what this is is kind of a model of a human in you know, kind of this hangman or stick figure um, type form. And the reason that's important is because this is a demonstration of um, our, our system's uh, need to understand the intent of pedestrians who are directing traffic. It isn't just about physics, it isn't just about sort of the road rules of the paint on the road or the traffic signals, which in this case they're out. We need to be able to understand that motions like this mean stop, motions like this as the official uh, directs us to uh, means go. And this is something that the Waymo driver is able to accomplish uh, completely on its own. So hopefully those three short <laughs> scenes help to demonstrate uh, the capabilities of the vehicle and also why it's really important that we have this more generalized level of intelligence um, uh, implemented in our system. Totally. And I, I think with our last uh, minute or so, I'm going to hit you with the question on everyone's mind, right? Is, is Waymo today safer than a human driver? So we looked at the data and the data uh, confidently points to yes. So uh, breaking down this slide, uh, we looked at our first 25 million miles of fully autonomous driving. This is nobody behind the driver's seat, nobody able to take over. And we compared it to human driving in the same geographies and on the same types of roads, which is really the only way that you can get an apples to apples or accurate representation of the safety. We looked at how many uh, incidents of three types the Waymo driver had versus humans, again, in that apples to apples comparison. And what we found was that we had 81% fewer airbag deployments, 72% uh, reduction in injury causing crashes, and a 57% reduction in police reported crashes. And so that all adds up to, you know, in this case, like 67 fewer injury causing crashes, which you might say, Hey, David, you know, 25 million miles, only 67 fewer crashes, like that's a relatively small number. I'd say two things to that. One, if you're one of these 67 people, you're not in back pain, uh, you can still play with your kids, uh, and you don't have some kind of a disfigurement from your crash, that means the world to you. And those are the people that we're fighting for every single day. But at the same time, these are small numbers. This is only the beginning. It's only 25 million miles. And that really points us to the next phase in our scaling, which is that we want to scale this massively, bring the Waymo driver to as many human-driven miles uh, as we can. If you want to dig into these numbers anymore, we, we publish all kinds of papers at waymo.com safety. Take a look there. And if you're inspired by this, um, please take a look at our careers page. Uh, jump on the ride with us. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Awesome. Well, David, thank you so much for taking the time. I'm sure uh, hopefully many of us feel a little bit better about getting into a Waymo around San Francisco. Uh, 